Good morning. This is H. Works. Um, Senate Judiciary will uh, be joining you. Um, and the next subject on our agenda is H. 428, um, which is um, regarding hate motivated crimes. Um, did we have a um, do we have a redraft print or do we have anything new? Nope, um, we've got the same draft that you looked at last week. Um, I think that you That's, heard from, should be draft 2.1 um, on your committee webpage from I believe the 21st. Okay, yep. <laughs> for us, please. Can you say that again? Um, it's, up on the, it's up on the website. I can share my screen for the committee to look at it if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Please. <clears throat> we've already had, we've already heard from all of our witnesses, right? I believe so. Yeah. And and folks are here now during markup. So yeah, it would be appropriate to post it. <clears throat> Cool. Okay. So. So can everybody see that? Okay. Yep. Two point one. Yep. So and I think that. So. <clears throat> I think that you looked at these. There are just a couple of changes to this two point one draft that you looked at yep. last time. We added that um, motivated in whole or in part. Um, and then in subsection B. We removed the uh, word substantial. So now it's that the victim's protected category um, need not be a predominant or the only reason for defendant's conduct. Um, so those are the two changes from draft 1.1. In addition, section three, we added, um, this is the, this is like the civil statute, the civil counterpart, and we just dropped or the national guard in there. So it matched the change that the house made to the hate crime statute. That's just a technical fix there. So those are the only changes from the, from the first draft that you looked at. Okay. Well, it's good to see at this point. All right. Anybody, anyone in the audience? Want to comment? I think Jeanette has a question. Jeanette, please. I was just going to ask <clears throat> if the um, if predominant. I get. I understand the sole reason, but is do we just predominant? Just means that um, it can be part <clears throat> of, as opposed to is that, is that the way we would, would interpret predominant reason? So a court would would. Um would interpret that, would have to develop some jurisprudence about how to interpret the word predominant. Um, I do think that you may have heard some testimony from witnesses that if you include that language about in whole or in part, you may not need subdivision, subsection B there. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's a question for the, for the committee um, if you want to include that language about predominant reason, because then you may, um, you may be directing the court to um, to find that even if it's um, even if that motivation based on the protected category isn't uh, largely the reason, um, they could still find that a defendant was subject to this enhanced penalty. Um, I guess I, I I the way I read it is that B gives a little bit more directive to the court than the language in whole or in part. Um, so Bryn, I I guess <laughs> now, now that I look at it, I'm wondering about whether we might better say need not be the predominant reason. And, and my thinking there oh. is um, that way we're saying among factors, it doesn't have to be the largest. Um, but if we say a predominant reason, we get into more, uh, more gray area, I think about whether it is one of the predominant. I think it's easier to interpret the predominant and that and sole reason exclude cases where, or, or, or make it clear that it doesn't have to be the only reason or the largest reason um, in order to trigger this. That makes Does sense that make to sense? me. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, where do we want to go from here? I can't see if anybody has their hand up. If you would entertain a motion, Mr. Chair. I certainly would. Uh, I would move that we report this bill favorably as um, amended right up to the last moment. Okay. Any comments from anybody who's here? Um, witnesses? Um, John Campbell, Julio, Julio Thompson, Rebecca Turner, Balco Schilling. Anybody with a comment? All right. I'm all set, Senator. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, committee, any further discussion? The motion is to report or uh, to amend the bill as seen in draft 2.1. I. Yes, Senator White. I, I was going to say that I, I originally really did like what was proposed by the ACLU about the um, uh, intentionally selected victim. But then when I heard the example of the two guys that get in a fight at the bar and it had nothing to do with that, but then the guy turns around and there's a black guy standing there. And so he, it, <clears throat> that was a, a reason for him to continue and to, um, and to um, <clears throat> continue beating up on the guy. I, I, I was swayed by that um, example. Because it was a reason, but not the predominant reason. It, it added to the, the fire. That's not me. <laughs> No, oh, sorry about the background noise. Unfortunately, I'm on a corner in Lindenville. Oh, okay. I was afraid people would traffic. think it was. I was afraid people would think it one of the members of the committee <laughs> was in distress. <laughs> I just uh, want to interject here for a moment to say this will be draft 3.1 if you vote on this, just because we okay. made that one change. Senator Baruth has moved that we report that we uh, amend. Um, H428 as seen in draft 3.1. <coughs> Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Peggy, could you please call the roll? Senator Benning. Yes. Senator Nika. Yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. All right. Somebody moved the bill as amended. <laughs> Uh, I think I did. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, That's all right. Uh, Senator Baruth has moved that we uh, report H428 as amended in draft 3.1 that we just approved. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Peggy, would you please call the roll? Senator Benning. Yes. Senator Nika. <clears throat> did you say yes? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, thank you. Senator Wade. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. Um, I don't know who would like to report this. I'm sure there's. I can report it. Thank you, Senator Baruth. Senator Baruth will report H428. <clears throat> All right. Um, that gives us an opportunity to spend a little more time since Bryn is with us. And Bryn is the drafter of eight. Uh, S7, the expungement bill, will give us a little more time to work on that bill. So I see. I'm going to give you a brief. You're not going to believe what happened on the way to the forum um, explanation. After all of our work on expungement um, over the last several years, um, somehow, um, different groups um, and the administration began to question um, the expungement process and what we were doing and blah, blah, blah. So um, Representative Grad and I got, um, Representative Grad first got approached about S7 asking it to be held off until next year. 
uh, not to not to deal with the expungement bill. Um, and uh, Peggy, would you just let um, David Schur know we're dealing with H uh, S seven right now in yep. case he's available. Yep. Uh, so um, anyway, we got a letter um, from Jay Johnson, the legal. Uh, counsel to the governor, Commissioner um, Sherling of the Department of Public Safety, Commissioner Baker of Corrections, and Commissioner, I'm going to say Berkshire, I mess up his name, of Department of Financial Regulation. Itzak. Yeah. Thank you. I almost said Perchlick, and I know that's a senator. Um, anyway, there had various <laughs> complaints about. Um, S7. And um, when we looked at their complaints, we were kind of dumbfounded because many of them were, you know, expungements, expungement. And, you know, the idea of, well, an additional email from the Vermont Bankers Association suggesting that they wouldn't be able to check the records to find out the records of the person that we expunged a particular. Um, offense, um, they wouldn't be able to check the records to see what that person had done 20 years ago, which is obviously the reason to have expungement. Um, so it became quite a, um, I don't know what, what you might call it. I am really appreciative of the Attorney General's office. PJ uh, e. Donovan called me, I'm sure Maxine, and as well as David Scher who then prepared a letter, uh, many of you may have seen the column that was in the paper about S7 to move forward um, with some significant changes to S7, um, assuming that we would deal with um, some of the concerns expressed by the administration and others next year. Um, we don't know if that'll satisfy them, but David um, went through um, various sections of H of S7, and Bryn has drafted a um, amendment for the House to consider. Now, obviously, they're con still working on the bill, but I wanted to give some time this morning for us to be aware of where um, the Attorney General uh, has suggested changes to um, the bill and trying to keep it alive. Um, and hopefully avoid a uh, veto by the governor of uh, our expungement. So I don't know, Ren, I'm going to turn it over to you. And if David, if you want to make some comments while before Bren, um, you're welcome to do that. Thank you, Senator. Uh, for the record, David, share with the Attorney General's office. You know, I'll keep my comments brief for now and happy to engage with discussion after Bryn presents, but I do very much appreciate the committee in our office and the Attorney General very much appreciate the committee looking at these issues. We really do think that a lot of the concerns of the administration are things that are addressed, and we're happy to sit down at the table and do that. We've presented some possibilities here, and uh, we simply don't agree that we need to dramatically stop uh, progress on a bill that passed the Senate unanimously, and um, and we think we can really move forward with addressing uh, a lot of their core concerns. And again, we're happy to continue with this process. So <laughs> I'll let Bryn uh, move forward, and then we can dive in in more detail after that. But thanks again to the committee for working on this. Remember, this is still a House, you know, action will be on it, so we don't know exactly what the that's right. And obviously, we defer to the House and, and this committee to decide on timing. That's outside of our purview, but uh, we but appreciate you working At some point, we're going to be asked to, hopefully, at some point, we're going to be asked to, to either concur or call for a committee of conference. And I think it's helpful to know what, how um, the, the Attorney General and uh, both Representative Brad and I have had a number of conversations. Uh, we really do appreciate the Attorney General stepping in here. Senator White. Can, can I just ask you if their <clears throat> concerns were the fact that they couldn't look back many, many years to see somebody's record, somebody who had committed some kind of a crime, 
And then it had been many years because there's a long process before it gets expunged. Right. And they hadn't committed a new crime. And they were concerned that about that. Is that the basic concern that them, they had? One of them. One of the concerns was, and we had left, we may have made a mistake and left open the possibility that somebody could be incarcerated and expunge an old law. Um, they could be incarcerated on an entirely different matter and could get something expunged, even though they were still incarcerated. That possibility, um, and I, there was a couple of other issues. They, our efforts to um, correct something for one particular person who had been on probation um, for failure to pay institution, if you remember, that created also some questions for them. And um, so that's another one that was raised. Okay. Thank but you. yeah, it's the basic, um, you know, correction saying, how can we do a risk assessment if we don't know what they did in the past? Especially 20 years ago. Right. Or 40 years ago. Oh, man. <clears throat> so, but I may have missed something, David, but that was basically the objection. And that was one of the major. They kept to, to talking about transparency, too, and I don't know what that meant. I still can't understand it. That's right. That, that was a, a issue. And some of this, as you're correctly identifying, is sort of a philosophical issue here. Is it important that we remember and keep on the record forever very old offenses? And we don't think that that serves a public safety purpose and does a lot of harm that is unnecessary. So, and then there were other sort of more technical issues around making sure that nothing's overlooked. And those pieces, I, I think we can really address. Senator Baruch. I was just wondering to what extent this overlaps with what Judge Grierson has said in the past about wanting us to move to a single system of just sealing. Uh, you, you know, he's made that argument more than once where we would uh, basically walk away from the idea of expungement and have sealing with different levels of who can access that information. Um, David, do you have a sense of is is there is that the the same way of viewing it, or do they just have a certain amount of overlap? That's a good question, Senator. And it was not in stated explicitly in the letter that a regime that looked more like just sealing would be something that they would prefer. Um, so I don't want to speak. <laughs> to that without having them say that directly. I don't want to mischaracterize what they were saying. Mm -hmm. That may be the case that that would be something that they'd be more comfortable with, but since that wasn't explicitly stated, I, I wouldn't hazard a, an answer on that without yeah. them weighing in. Because I, I, I have always taken Judge Grierson's point, would obviously simplify things administratively. It would make it easier for the judicial system, but it gets rid of the, the central goal for the person involved, which is to have the offense gone, um, to have it existing somewhere under seal. I think, you know, we all know how that works. Information is going to leak out in various circumstances. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd connect those pieces. I, yeah, and I, and I appreciate that. I, I, I mentioned one other thing um, that we sometimes forget. Other than um, few sections, the one dealing with um, one particular person's issues. The S7 was based upon the recommendations of the Sentencing Commission, on which sit several members of the administration. It's not like this, you know, and so as the House started to go through the letter from the administration, they were somewhat dumbfound, dumbfounded because the <laughs> while there is a new commissioner of corrections and a new commissioner of public safety, the sentencing commission was did have representatives of the administration on it. And that's where the generation of S7 came from. It was not just pulled out of, um, you know, anyway, <clears throat> pulled out of the sky and all of a sudden somebody came up with this wonderful idea. Um, and Senator, I want to just 
It was a unanimous vote out of the sentencing yeah, commission. Yeah, a unanimous vote from the sentencing commission. So um, if people start complaining about what crimes were in there, they should look back to their own sentencing commission and vote unanimously to recommend that S7 be uh, the way it was. Given all those um, <laughs> concerns, um, I'm going to ask Rin, unless there's other questions, to walk through the changes. Or at least where we're headed. I mean, there's a lot of changes, obviously. It's hard to uh, <coughs> try to get something through this to get the basis of the sentence. Um, if you go to page five, I think that's where the significant change takes place. Yep, that's right. Um, so, good morning, committee, for the record. Would people the rather have it posted on, on the screen or? Can you read it on our, it's on the, uh, our web page. Yes, it is. The only concern about that, Dick, is anybody watching on YouTube ne does not necessarily have two devices going at the same time. Okay, so go ahead and post on our web page. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. So um, thank you, That's a, that was a good introduction, Senator Sears, um, I, because I was about to start off going through this by saying this is a, a House Judiciary Amendment that that, that committee hasn't looked at yet. Um, so there's quite a bit of yellow highlight in this draft and some of it reflects the proposals um, as offered by the Attorney General. Some of it reflects um, some technical changes or amendments that I'm proposing and some of it um, reflects some of the work that the committee has done with other witnesses. So I'm gonna try and limit this, uh, my walkthrough to just those portions that are proposed by the attorney general's office, because it sounds to me like yeah. that's what you guys wanna really yeah. hone in yes. on. Okay, <clears throat> so um, page five is where the substantial changes begin. And the first one yeah. is the definition of qualifying crime. So the committee will probably remember that uh, the version that passed the Senate provided that all criminal offenses were eligible for either sealing or expungement, except for listed crimes and drug trafficking offenses. So um, this, that definition of qualifying crime is quite substantially changed here. So instead it provides all misdemeanors, except for listed <coughs> crime misdemeanors and misdemeanors involving uh, sexual exploitation of children are considered um, eligible for either sealing or expungement. Um, and then, so we've kind of cut off that unlimited felony uh, category. So instead, I'm gonna scroll down here, you'll see, so sub subdivision A here are the misdemeanors that aren't those two types of misdemeanors. Sub B will be what is already existing law, um, the certain types of burglary offenses, as this committee will well remember. Um, and then so what will be subsection C are offenses relating to the possession of regulated substances. Sub D will be offenses related to the sale or dispensation or transport of regulated substances. And then sub E will be qualifying felony property offenses, which is uh, already defined in the bill. Um, with one with one addition, which I'll talk about, and then any offense for which a person has been granted an unconditional pardon from the governor. So that's a limited uh, set of felony felony <coughs> offenses, um, much more limited than uh, the version that passed um, out of the Senate. So qualifying felony property offense, these are all the same crimes that you looked at before in the Senate passed version, with the exception of one. And this is that 18 BSA 23 or 4223, which this is the prescription fraud felony. Um, and that's, ex so that's ex right now that is eligible for sealing or expungement. Um, so I just popped that right into the qualifying felony property offense there. So um, the parameters for sealing or expungement that apply to felony property offenses will also apply to that type of offense. So is that, is that relatively clear how, how we've changed what is uh, eligible for sealing or expungement? And I think as, it is, but uh, it doesn't tell us what's not there anymore. Nope. 
Right. And I think that that was really intended to address the, um, the concern that was, are there all of these um, felony offenses out there that we don't really want to be right. um, making eligible? Right. Okay, so I'm right. going to... I'll yeah, I mean, it, it takes any crime of violence out. Right, all the listed crimes are out um, as they were before, <clears throat> um, but it also uh, eliminates those sexual exploitation yeah. of children crimes that some of which are misdemeanors. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going here. <clears throat> so now we're, so this is section four, this is the actual expungement and sealing statute. Yep. Um, and then we've got some language here that the house is working on. I think I'll skip over for now. So that was not part of the uh, attorney general's proposals. Here on page 11, this is that uh, language that was the, this committee worked um, to craft about those particular circumstances where a person um, has served a probation term for which they um, their probation was tied to their payment of restitution. So you'll notice that this is struck through. Um, the proposal is to take that section out. And instead, we've put in, we've dropped in some language here that um, says that a person who's under, who is under the supervision of the department at the time that they file a petition to have a criminal conviction record either sealed or expunged, that, that record is not eligible for sealing or expungement if the person is under the supervision of the department at the time they filed the petition. I'm gonna keep going. So this is all the same um, same language that applies different standards for when a record could be sealed or expunged based on the type of offense. But this is all unchanged um, until we get down here to J. This is the qualifying felonies. And you remember this was the section that provided that um, all other felonies that uh, didn't fall into the other categories, which included the felony property offenses or the drug um, regulated drug offenses were treated in a certain way. And we've just removed that section because there won't be any other felony offenses apart from those that were defined and dealt with earlier in the bill. So that's pretty straightforward, I think. Yep. And then I'm just going to do a quick scan here. I think that may be it for the attorney general's proposals. <clears throat> yes. Yep. Oh, okay. and so I just want to scroll to the very end to talk about section eight, which was the study. Um, yep. And although this, this, um, so this is not one of the attorney general's proposals, but I thought the committee may be interested. Well, actually, that, that was my proposal, right? Yeah. Yep. So this um, was the directive to the Sentencing Commission to ask the Sentencing Commission to um, study the issue of sealing and expungement and specifically how to make all offenses except for big 12 offenses no, no, no. eligible for either um, sealing or expungement and also directed uh, the commission to look at taking one, should, should Vermont take one avenue or another, either just sealing or just expungement. And so the proposal here is to change that directive. Uh, so instead of going to the sentencing commission, it will go to justice oversight committee and um, justice <laughs> oversight will introduce as proposed legislation, any recommendations that makes uh, concerning a policy to make all offenses apart from big 12 offenses eligible, um, who should have access to sealed records and whether Vermont should continue to um, take both tracks sealing and expungement, or if it should um, just take one track, and then how to implement a petitionless process to seal and expunge. So all of the same directives, but now um, going to justice oversight instead of the sentencing commission. Well, the reason I chose justice oversight was because the sentencing commission has already recommended those by and large. <laughs> Sure. So, <clears throat> Bryn, <clears throat> going back up a ways, I don't remember exactly where it was, but it said that if somebody is under the supervision of the Department of Corrections, they can't 
um, apply to have a previous <clears throat> um, record expunged. And I'm just wondering if, if when somebody is 20 years old, they do do something and it, it's not related at all to, and then 20 years later or 15 years later there, they do something else. They're not related at all. They have no, <clears throat> one was a kind of a youthful, um, stupid move, but it has a record. Does that mean that the person can't um, apply to have that, that previous record expunged even though the time has gone and they did not do any, have any crime <clears throat> in the intervening except that it, during that time period and now they, they did something else? Yes. I mean, I think that the idea here is to eliminate all possibility of um, a person being under the supervision and being eligible to have a, a previous record expunged or sealed. And this, I think this proposal is in response to the Department of Corrections testimony and the House Judiciary Committee that they were concerned about um, the possibility of a person being under their supervision and having a record expunged um, because it, they were concerned about their risk assessments being able to okay. make their okay. It just seems a little draconian to me to say that if you did something when you were 20 or 21 years old and now you're <clears throat> um, that had nothing to do with what, anyway, I, it just. Uh, yeah, I, um, I would, I think I would, um, okay. that was part of the letter from the four commissioners. Yeah, uh, I the know. Three commissioners in Jay. Um, and. Uh, <clears throat> well, we yeah. certainly don't want to forgive people for, um, past indiscretions. Well, heaven forbid. No, actually, we do. Um, I don't know that we intended to have somebody who was currently under the Department of Corrections be able to uh, get an expungement or something. But, um, that we just, um, that's trying to again get a bill. Um, this was. Uh, the governor's letter was, or the administration letter was April 22nd, happy birthday, so it was, um, by the way. <clears throat> I mean, we had started this bill in January. I know. And they write on April 22nd. Um, no. Did that explain it, Senator White, or not? Yeah, it did. I just think that it's, um, I mean, I, <clears throat> I understand that, but I, I just, you know, anyway, I, I think it's um, a bit stupid. And I'm thinking about the grandmother that you had that wanted to go on field trip with her kid and she couldn't get that expunged because, because she, uh, had a DUI well, or something. I mean, anyway, it had nothing to do with what she did before. I, I will note if it's helpful, um, I think that the circum under S7 as it um, passed out of the Senate, I think the circumstances under which a person could be being supervised and have an offense eligible for ceiling or expungement are very small. Um, because if you remember most of most of those provisions for sealing or expungement provide that the person, if the person committed a subsequent offense, they have completed their um, supervision for that subsequent offense before they can apply for an expungement mm -hmm. of their prior. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, I get it. <laughs> this language is really intended to appease uh, the department, I believe. Yeah. Um. Are there any comments from the audience? I can't see you. So. You know, oh, there we are. Any further comments? Marshall Paul, John Campbell, Judge Grierson, I think. Did you have a comment? Uh, 
I didn't. Uh, good morning, Senator. Thank you uh, for the record, <coughs> Brian Grierson, Chief Superior Judge. I, I'm sorry I joined uh, the discussion late, and I don't know if uh, Bryn had a chance to review the uh, language on the uh, Judicial Bureau. Was um, I did yeah. not, Judge. I did not review that with them, if okay. only because the House hasn't looked at that part yet. So. All right. So I, I don't have any comments on. Okay. Otherwise. Good. Thank you. David, you Senator, the only thing I'll add is, um, which I think is clear, you know, we supported the bill as it came out of this committee and through the Senate, and this is an attempt not to, uh, you know, disavow, disabuse us ourselves of that good work, but simply to try to get something that could become law. And some improvement is better than none. The, the letter from the administration did seem to indicate that um, the, the governor's office is not enthusiastic about letting the bill become law as it stood. And so we, again, uh, 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 you know, let's not let the perfect be the en enemy of the good here and let some improvement move forward. And that's, that's the impetus behind these, these changes, which uh, I, I, some of them are, are significant. I actually think that some are less significant, including the um, somebody currently under the supervision. I actually don't think that's a big practical change, but um, yeah, just wanted to make that clear in case it hadn't been. No, I, I, I really, once again, um, it does make me wonder about the effectiveness of having a sentencing commission um, <clears throat> with a wide variety of membership, both from the courts, the defense bar, the prosecution, um, the attorney general's office, and many members of the administration. Um, and then to have that commission make recommendations on legislation, which is what we asked them to do. And then um, roughly four months into the legislative session, they are concerns about this, about a bill that was basically based upon the sentencing commission. That, that's more, you know, that's problematic, quite frankly. And, um, I believe in the in the bill earlier this session, we um, sunsetted the sentencing commission um, in 2022. It probably was a good idea. Anything else? No. So I was not going to say anything, but I would just sort of chime in to echo um, David Sher's remarks. You know, I think we are disappointed. This has been a lot of work in the Sentencing Commission and in the legislature and in subcommittees of the Sentencing Commission. And, you know, this was a proposal that received broad support in the Sentencing Commission. Um, and so, you know, it, it is you know, I'll, I'll say certainly frustrating to have all that work, you know, essentially not turn into anything. I mean, the, you know, what this bill amounts to at this point is something that we could have developed during the session that's, you know, this didn't really require any of the Senate, you know, basically the work of the Sentencing Commission um, was sort of undone here. So certainly we um, had hoped to see something better. I think that it is what we very much support is the change to um, have the Joint Justice Oversight take a look at this because, um, you know, like I said, I think the Sentencing Commission has done its work in this area. Um, and so, frankly, you know, we still support the bill. We still think that something is better than nothing. We think that this is a step forward. It's just a very, very tiny step. Um, and that's all. Thank you, Marshall. Anyone else? John Campbell. Uh, thank you, Senator. I, I'm glad that these changes were made. I, I actually was the one who, who brought up the uh, issue of the exploitation, sexual exploitation of children uh, when it was in the House. That was the first time that I, I had seen it. I was not on the uh, commission. and. Uh, I think it really goes to um, the fact that you put a whole a number of people, uh, some of them who've never had any um, experience in, in the criminal justice system and not realizing that the way the laws are written, that 
there's a lot of laws out there that that could have been swept up in and so i think it's a good idea that you are putting the uh, this into the hands of the judicial oversight um, I have not, I just saw this draft this morning, so I haven't had a chance to go through it. But uh, again, as you pointed out, you guys have been working on this for, um, for some time. Um, I'm just hoping that we, you know, caught all the, uh, the potential uh, uh, problems that might exist. And uh, I think the judicial oversight yeah. will surely have the opportunity to do that. Right. Well, James Pepper was the main person from your office working on it. Uh, he testified extensively on the bill and worked to make adjustments to S7 as it left the Senate, I might add unanimously. Yeah. So, well, we're here to try to help, you know. Oh, uh, well, you've been a great help, thank you. I didn't mean that the way it came out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the work of the state's attorneys. Yeah. Well, thank it you. It may have come out as <laughs> it did not come out the way I intended it to. Um, well, you know, meant, those things happen. Thank you for your help. I meant thank you for your help, sir. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at that then. I'll, I'll say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I don't, I don't think we need to. We're actually going to get done a little bit early today, which is fitting. Um, yep. Senator White. The, the, um, I don't mean to take us off track here, but while Marshall and David are here, I just wanted to um, mention that there was a fatal car accident down here um, <clears throat> last weekend, and um, they released, they did not release the name of the driver, and because the driver was under age, was a juvenile. And when they were asked why they didn't do that, the, um, the police officer said the law has changed around releasing identifying information about, and it hasn't really changed yet, but he, he uh, talked about that. And because it's going to family court, they did not release it. And I just wanted to thank the two of you for helping us work on that. I think that one interesting aspect of that is the media has been reporting this. Um, and in fact, members of the media have been testifying in House government ops that uh, they were upset that the state police did not release the name of the victim. And they saw that as a new change. And what's entirely inaccurate about that is that's a law that's been on the books for a long time that right. the state police are not supposed to release the names of the victims of any crime, regardless of age. Right. Uh, but there, it's, been, it's being spun as if that is some new change that, um, yeah, and it's not a new change at all. It's been the law for certainly as long as I've been practicing law that um, the, and the press can still report the names of victims. It's just that the state police can't release the names of victims. Right, so but they did talk specifically that. about the, driver yeah about not releasing that name yeah but if you look at like the uh the article that was in cax today um mm -hmm. you know they go on about how there's been some change that prevents the police from releasing the identity of the victim which just isn't true at all i mean that's been huh. that's a law that's been on the books for a long time and now it's being sort of lumped in with this other this other I'll, circumstance i'll have so, to check that out Well, that bill didn't come through. That that was the government ops bill. Right, right, right. It was, but <clears throat> it was one hundred and seven. Right? Well, yeah, and it it and it passed out of the House Gov Ops um, on a ten one vote yesterday <clears throat> or the day before. And that was also in the Bennington Banner this morning. Hmm. But the story related more to the failure on that particular case in Putney. The Putney. Where they're actually yeah. not releasing the names because of the rule. All right. Um, I have sent everybody a copy of the Bennington Banner article this morning on S um, on H one eighty three. One eighty three.
So can I, what are we doing now with S7? We had this information. Well, the about. House needs to act. And we then, passed it. Um, they will need to act. My hope is that they end up somewhere along the version that was just passed and, and that we'll be able to concur with them. Um, but I wanted to, because the change is so huge, I wanted this committee to be aware of those changes and the ask of a study. And I don't know if we'll put it in or hopefully the House will put in that study by the Justice Oversight Committee that Marshall just referred to. That originally I thought the bill was <coughs> gonna die over the House right. and David and the Attorney General resurrected it. I appreciate that. Um, and so the House has taken testimony and believe marking up the version that we just looked at. Oh, okay. okay. And then uh, assuming they pass a bill out of the House, we would then um, uh, we'll be ready for it. Okay. Be ready for it and decide whether to concur or ask for a committee of conference. If something happens and they don't pass a bill, I mm -hmm. my um, conversation with Representative Grad were to put that section regarding the study into um, the miscellaneous judiciary bill. Okay, thanks. Good. Thank you all very much for the hard work this morning.